Welcome to our review on water for drinking. First thing we need to know is where our tap water has come from originally. So the tap water that you have in the UK would have originated in lakes, reservoirs, aquifers, which are underground sources of water, rivers, or potentially from wastewater. Because the water is coming from all of these open sources, then there's the risk of contaminants being present within it, which wouldn't be good for us to consume. So some of the possible contaminants we may find in the water are insoluble materials like leaves and soil that have just dropped in. We may find soluble substances like salts and pollutants and fertilizers and pesticides, etc. And of course, microorganisms, which if you consume them can make you very unwell, as you may have experienced if you've been on holiday to countries where the tap water isn't as well treated as in the UK. We do need to know the stages that water goes through in order to be processed to make it safe for us to drink. So the first thing that's going to happen is the water is going to enter the processing plant from the reservoir. And as it does so, it passes through this screen. Now, the screen is there because it's going to actually filter out these large objects like leaves and twigs because they'll get caught in that meshwork. After that, it carries on into something called a settlement tank, and there the water is going to be rather stationary. So that what we find is that sand and soil, these larger particles, are going to sink down to the bottom and therefore settle out. We can then run the water off from the settlement tank, and then we add these chemicals called lime and aluminium sulfate. And the whole idea behind adding those two chemicals is they cause the clumping of the small particles that were too light to sink to the bottom. So once they've clumped together, then they will sink to the bottom and that can be taken off to landfill. The clean water then continues on and it's going to go through another filter made of this very fine sand, which will remove any remaining particles of mud or grit. At this point, anything that was floating around in there should have been removed, but we still have those microorganisms present. So at this point, we then add chlorine to the water to kill bacteria. The only thing that could still be present in there are some of these soluble chemicals. So that before the water actually leaves the processing plant, then they take regular tests to check for any of those soluble materials. And if they're present, then that water won't actually make it into the mains to supply your house. Once that's all done, they check the pH of the water and correct it so that it's neutral. And then it's ready to be pumped into your homes and buildings. So to summarise the four major steps that we've got in the processing of our drinking water. Filtration, first of all, to remove the large objects like leaves and sticks. Sedimentation, so that any of the large particles sink down. Then we add our chemicals to make it clump together and they sink down. Then filtration again to remove any small particles. And then finally chlorination to kill the bacteria. The second option of where we can get drinking water from is actually from the oceans and the seas. The downside to this is you can't just go and drink that water because it contains high concentrations of dissolved salts, which are very bad for your health if you consume them in large quantities. So we'd have to put that water through a process called desalination, and that will remove the salts to make the water potable or drinkable. If we're talking about doing this on a small scale, then we use reverse osmosis and we carry that out using ultra filters which filter out those salts from the water. If we're talking about large scale desalination, then that's using simple distillation to actually get the nice clean water for us. The last thing to bear in mind is that not all countries would see desalination as a good idea. So countries like the UK probably will not go down this pathway because we've got a plentiful supply of fresh water. Whereas if we're talking about another country where they don't have plentiful fresh water supplies or where the energy resource cost is very low, then desalination may be a very good option for them.
Hopefully at the end of this video you can describe how wastewater and groundwater are treated to make them safe to drink. You can recall some of the sources of water. You can describe the process in detail and you can describe how salt water is treated to make it safe to drink.